We're at a time where there's a lot of darkness. We're at a time where Washington is messed up. I mean, it's always bad. But right now, the lunatics are running this up. You know, right now, when they let Joe Biden out of the basement, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer team up and the assault that they are waging on our country is terrible. On spending, I pray nobody tells the Democrats what comes after a trillion. Because it is nuts. A few weeks back, we voted on what they called a $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. Now, mind you, of that entire bill, 9% was health care spending on COVID. 91% was unrelated to that. We stayed up all night fighting against that bill. Thank you. Offering amendment after amendment after amendment. I offered an amendment. I said, all right, you're going to send stimulus checks? How about we don't send stimulus checks to the millions of illegal immigrants in this country? We voted on that. Every single Democrat voted on it. Failed by one vote. If one Democrat had switched his vote, we would not have sent checks to millions of illegal immigrants. Then I introduced another member and I said, all right, you want to send illegal immigrants? I get that. You know, there's a new politically correct term for illegal immigrants. It's called undocumented Democrats. <laughs> stimulus checks to criminals in jail, currently incarcerated. We voted on that. Every single Democrat voted no. Voted no and failed by one vote. That next week I actually went to the floor. I said, all right, I understand for some bizarre reason you want to send checks to criminals in jail. How about this then? Let's see if we can go even more narrow. How about murderers? People currently incarcerated for homicide. Let's not send them a check. Democrats stood up and objected. I said, all right, how about rapists? Let's not send rapists a check. Democrats stood up and objected. I said, all right, all right, let's see if we can find any agreement. How about child molesters? The worst of the worst. By the way, in Texas, I think the appropriate penological approach to child molesters is garden shears. <laughs> so can't we all just agree, let's not send a $1,400 taxpayer check to child molesters in prison? Nope, Democrats don't have an objective. That's your tax dollars at work, those checks are coming. This is nuts. Yes, it is. This is crazy. You look at taxes, I gotta tell you right now, taxes, if you work and pay taxes, your taxes are going up. Every tax is going up. Income taxes are going up. Corporate taxes are going up. Capital gains taxes are going up. Small business taxes are going up. The death tax is going up. All of them. The spending taxes, the border, the border's a disaster. About a month ago, I took 19 senators down the border. I've been to the border many, many times in Texas. I've never seen it this bad. We're on pace for 2 million people to cross illegally into this country. We visited the Donna Tent City, the giant tent city built to handle the massive influence. It's built to handle a thousand people. With COVID restrictions, its capacity is 250. When we were there, 
There were 4,200 people in that facility. It's over 1,700 percent of its capacity. We saw the Biden cages. Cage after cage after cage of kids. And they weren't six feet apart. They weren't three feet apart. They weren't even three inches apart. They were lying on the floor, no beds, no mats, no nothing. Wrapped in reflective emergency blankets. Side by side by side. The rate of COVID positivity in that facility is over 10%. But don't worry, Kamala Harris is on the case. <laughs> so Biden realized he had no solution to this since he caused the problem. So Biden did what any good Democrat in Washington did. He blamed someone else. So he said, all right, Kamala, you're in charge. And Kamala demonstrated the decisive leadership we've come to expect from her. She went up to the Canadian border. <laughs> she really did. She hadn't been to the border. She went up to New Hampshire to do an event. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry. We're not seeing this massive influx of Canucks coming down. <laughs> you, you seem a little bit confused what's going on here. And then you look at the assault on our rights. The assault on free speech. The assault on religious liberty. The assault on the Second Amendment. You look at the people that have been appointed to this administration. I'm here with Sarah, the Secretary of Health and Human Services. So Joe Biden has said his top priority is the pandemic. So of course his secretary of HHS is a medical expert. No. He's not a doctor. He's not a scientist. He's got zero experience in medicine and virology, zero experience in logistics. He's a trial lawyer from California. As far as I can tell, the only background he has in health care is suing the little sisters of the poor. Of course, he got confirmed because every Democrat voted for him. By the way, if a Republican had nominated Someone to be secretary of HHS, particularly in the middle of a pandemic, who knew nothing about science or health or medicine? That Republican would have been laughed out of the room and our conference would have voted against him. But not this Democratic conference. They will line up and vote as one. You know, that all night when we were offering amendments, there was another provision in this bill. Forgiving agricultural loans, because by the way, ag loans are COVID relief. Forgiving agricultural loans to, quote, historically disadvantaged races, explicitly race-based. You're African-American or Hispanic or Asian-American, your loans are forgiven. At a rate of 120%. So 20% more than you owe, they're forgiven. There's no means tested. So, so you can be... An African-American billionaire. And your loans are forgiven. And if someone's a poor white farmer, sorry. Wrong race. We offered an amendment to say, look, the government shouldn't be discriminating based on race. This is wrong. We have a colorblind constitution that protects everybody's rights. Amen. Every single Democrat voted no. Lost by one vote. By the way, both your Virginia senators voted no. Now listen, I, I will say this. I'm Hispanic. I saw this thing and said, heck, I need to get me a farm. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are shoveling that kind of money out. I'm clearly doing something wrong. So I said I'm going to talk to you about darkness and light. We've talked about a lot of darkness. Where's the light? You know, 12 years ago, the last time we had a Democratic president, a Democratic House, and a Democratic Senate. 
Twelve years ago, we had Barack Obama and some guy named Joe Biden. Whatever happened to him? <laughs> Got elected president and vice president. And we saw 12 years ago a bunch of crazy Democrats doing damaging things to our country that we're still paying for now. And what happened the very next year, 2009? Virginia elected a Republican governor. There is a natural pendulum to politics. It's been true for as long as you look. One party gets in power, they go too far. The American people say, well, slow down there a little bit, it moves back the other direction. And it's gone back and forth and back and forth. I gotta tell you, every time I see this administration doing something crazier and crazier and crazier, part of me oddly is gratified. Because every instant they do that, it tells me, you know what? We're heading to some good elections. We're heading to a good election here in Virginia in 2021. We're heading to good elections nationally in 2022. And we're headed to good elections nationally in 2024. And Virginia is the tip of the spear. Y'all's timing is the first election coming after this. It makes a difference for everyone that lives in Virginia. But the whole country is watching too. This is a sign. A sign. And by the way, there are a bunch of Democrats that are watching. Because when we whip Terry McCullough's tail. <laughs>
because he's a good man. He's a good man in his heart. Let me tell you, and it pains me to say, current governor of Virginia is an embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs>